Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. Uh, welcome back to this uh, watercolor journal series. If you're new here, we paint in our watercolor journals and we do lots of different subjects and play and experimentation. And today is definitely going to be a play kind of day. Um, I'm really into line and wash right now, and that's using basically pen or ink as well as watercolor together uh, to create lots of different um, types of texture and illustration and there's a lot you can do with line and wash. So I am going to be doing something a little bit more abstract. It's not really going to be abstract. You'll be able to tell what it is, but it's going to be different than drawing an object, filling it in with color of the paint. So we're going to do some flowers. For supplies, I have my six by nine Bao Hong sketchbook watercolor journal. Um, I also have my Core Q O R by Golden uh, Mini Palette. Um, this is just my preferred palette right now. I usually have a much larger Core palette that was made from tube paints. This one came already pre-made. So it has twelve colors in it. It's great. Uh, brushes. I'm using one brush today. Uh, I picked my silver black velvet size eight brush and then I also have a Fudunosuke, um brush pen. This is by Tombow. Uh, I'm just looking for the size on here on this particular one which I'm not seeing but it's a it's a brush pen but it has a very hard tip on it so you don't get a lot of bend to it. So and that is what I'm using. Whatever ink you use, you just want to make sure it's permanent um, and archival so that way it doesn't uh, smudge when you add water to it. We're going to actually be doing adding ours after the fact, so it should be okay. All right, we are going to use probably just two or three colors. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create flowers. So I'm going to create something that feels or resembles a flower, but it's going to be very sloppy, very, I'm going to call this sloppy sophisticated because I think the end product looks pretty sophisticated, but, um, it's, you're going to have to let go. Control is not part of this particular page in our, in our watercolor journals. So if that's something you struggle with, uh, this will be a great practice for you. So I'm going to take some Phthalo blue, P-H-T-H-A-L-O, phthalo blue with a little paint gray uh, to make this kind of light navy color. And I'm going to start by basically, I want something that resembles like the center of a flower and petals that go out, but I'm not, it's going to be sloppy. Okay. So this is going to be like the center and we're going to add a few iterations to this and then big petals. So I'm going to have two big flowers on here. Okay. So we're very sloppy so far. Now, while this is still wet, I'm actually going to take some of my, um, I always forget the name of this color. I really have to write them on my card because I'm the worst. Uh, the transparent brown oxide with paints gray. That's a lot of paints gray in there. I want it to be more brown and then add a lot of water to it. So I'm just, so it's a really light. Oh, how did I get pink in there? Magenta. Well, that will be interesting. That was not my intention. I picked up a little magenta by accident. All right. I want it to be this really light brown color. And now I have this big blob of magenta in there, but whatever. Okay. So this is something that resembles a flower like shape. Now I'm going to go back in with much darker Payne's gray and Navy, or I'm sorry, Payne's gray and phthalo blue. And I'm going to drop this color in the center because what I'm trying to do is create a center that kind of floats away from us or it takes a deep dive inward. I probably should have had a different mixing palette so you can see my colors a little bit better. You know what? I can take this card out of here. 
and use the top. Everything is really wet in there. I'm not worried about it. I'm actually going to have to dry it a little bit. But again, you're just going for something flower shaped. Try not to overthink it. I kind of love whatever this is going on in here. This side over here, I need a little bit more of that brown color, so I'm going to have to remake that. <clears throat> Making it over here, adding bunches of water. It's almost like a gray brown. And I do want it to stay light and airy at the edges, but really deep and dark in the middle. All right, let's drop some dark brown in here as well in the center. Give it some interest. All right, now we're gonna come over here while this one dries, we're gonna come over here and do this one over here. Do another one, another version of the same thing. Let me see if I can move my clip so it's not in the way. So here, I'm gonna actually start with the brown or gray color with the big petals. So I'm holding my brush up high so it allows, or it doesn't allow me to have a lot of control and making these petal-like swatches, add a little more brown to this. Lots of water. Okay, and then let's come to the center here. Isn't this fun? There's like no way you can really mess this up. I mean, I'm sure somebody's going to be like, oh, it didn't come out. But you know what? It's because you're, you're trying to control it too much. Just think big petals and like let your brush kind of wander around. So now I'm using like the tip of my brush. I'm creating some like petal-ish texture. To pull out like a little color right there because I want it to be dark but when you have like varying okay so this one needs a darker center But I always leave some white in there. Give it some breathing room. Dropping in some Payne's gray. And some darker brown color. And it's okay if this is kind of bleeding out. I do want to keep it controlled. Like if it's going too far, I'm just going to rinse off my brush and claw that back a little bit. All right, I'm gonna dry these. Like this side got a little, it's kind of fun, but. I'm gonna let these dry and then we're gonna come back and add some ink and then maybe some more paint, more details. Okay. They look super fun so far. I love this color palette. So let it dry. I'm going to use my heat tool and we'll come back and do our next step. All right, we're back and everything is nice and dry. And now we've already created some sense of depth in these flowers. It looks like the centers are going in because of that um, change in value, that dark, deep value. So shadow pulling it away from the viewer with these light petals. Um, but now we're going to use this lovely brush pen. Uh, so just to give you 
a sense here we'll on the back of this card so you can write with a really fine line with this pen but this one it is a hard um, a hard tip brush pen so you're not going to get as much flex as with others but you can press down and also get a harder line or I'm sorry a thicker line as well so you can use that to your advantage you have a couple of different versions of that line in there so with this I am going to just start to draw some really big petals that somewhat go with the shapes around here. I am not going to outline anything that looks like a petal. I am going to make this line drawing independent in a way. All of my petals are going to come back to this center and I am not going to worry about overlapping. And again, trying not to overthink it too much. Okay, that's one. So we've set up a nice line structure. And what I love about this is that there's like this dichotomy between um, this flat ink drawing. So this is flat. It looks very two-dimensional. And your brain is like, okay, that's very flat. But I know what it is. It's, it's flower petals. Um, and then on top of this somewhat three-dimensional, um, or at least the suggestion of three dimensions color that's like setting up, oh, I don't know why I did that. I did this weird crook over here, whatever. We're going to, we're going to go with it. All right. So I'm going to use my pen, even though you're not going to see most of it to kind of darken some lines in the center here, but I'm not going to get too crazy. I don't want to do lines all the way out. I want this to feel kind of flat, but those look fun. Okay. And actually you don't even have to do this part. Now I'm a little bit in love. We're going to go back and we're just going to add more layer, another layer or two um, to especially this one, darken the center a little bit more and just add some texture that actually works with the drawn leaves here. Okay. Okay. So here is my, actually, let's go right back in, make this dark blue color. So someone asked me the other day, I mix phthalo and Payne's gray a lot to make this like navy color. Someone asked me if they could use um, indigo instead. Absolutely. Indigo is going to have a slightly different quality. Uh, uh, you won't have as much control over the blueness of your indigo depending on the brand you have. And it might be a little more gray or a little cooler. I'm sorry, a little warmer actually of a blue but indigo is a beautiful color and you'll get very similar results, just not identical. So I'm adding in some little dots of texture, like around the center. I've decided to put these little dots in there. And then as I let these centers dry, what I'm going to do is like pull some of the color out with my brush, but in a very subtle way. Let's take some brown and put it in here to mix it up. Now the brown has a little bit of a yellow hint to it. And with blue, um, when I'm using a concentrated version of the black brown, <clears throat> And with this blue, it, it might have a green quality to it. So just be prepared for that. So now you can see I'm just adding some subtle. Basically, I have a clean brush. My brush doesn't really have any paint on it. I keep cleaning it off. And I'm just taking what's already on the page and dipping my brush in it a little bit. And just pulling it out and using that to add a little texture. So 
So really just adding another dimension to this, this other layer of paint that is kind of plays into the three dimensional quality of these a little bit more. But I like that it's kind of stuck between the two. It's not quite three dimensional. It's not realistic by any stretch of the imagination, but it has this like essence of this is a beautiful flower. I know exactly what it is. I'm a big fan of this color palette this um that we've got going on here. And we're almost done. You could paint like a million of these. Oh, it'd be fun to paint these on a really big piece of paper and just do a lot of them. Or paint them really, really big. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, what else do I want to do? Add a little more brown there. Okay, I think we're done. I think we're done. Aren't these fun? So sloppy, sloppy uh, sophistication. So it looks like it could be a big high end, somewhat abstract piece on your wall, but it was very lose control, get a little messy. Um, color choice will really dictate the mood and the feel of this type of work. Um, so that way you can really concentrate on evoking kind of a feeling with color. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Pretty simple, uh, but one of those things that you could do over and over again and get a different result. And especially if you have control issues and you're going to try to paint inside the lines, I encourage you to do this multiple times to really push yourself and look at like if it looks different than what your expectation is, it doesn't feel as loose and free, really look at what you did versus what you want to do. And sometimes you just have to sit with your piece when you're like, that is not what I expected and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Sometimes just sit with your piece, look at it for five minutes, 10 minutes and compare it to what you were trying to accomplish. And then you'll start to find these small um, details where it's like, oh, I really just had to like let go here and not try to stay in the lines there. And so you can see here, I have lots of paint outside the lines and it gives it that really loose and free feel. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to check out the description for links to supplies and materials. I have to go add the food nasuki one, I think, um, as far as the pens go to the list of pens that I use. Uh, but it'll have the core mini palette and the colors that I use for my larger um, tube palette, as well as brushes, the Bahong sketchbook, lots of other papers and other sketchbooks I recommend. Um, so yeah, go check that out. Leave a comment. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new here and you'd like to get um, alerts of when new uh, videos will be coming out. All right, y'all take care and happy painting.